Hey, family, what's going on? Hey! It's the Relentless Halftime Show. Oh, my goodness, it's game day halftime. That's right, it's exciting. We are here, and I am so excited to welcome our first, second, and third time visitors wherever you are. Listen, Relentless Online community on YouTube, Facebook, our website, John Gray Ministries, wherever you're logging in from. Listen, we love you so much. Type the city that you're joining us from. We can't wait to acknowledge you and just hope you're having a wonderful time today for our Love and Football segment. Listen, all of our visitors in the house, stand up. We want to welcome you. Go ahead and stand up. Come on, church. Let's celebrate our visitors. We love you. Come on. Hype it up. Let's if go. If you have a visitor next to you, give them a fist bump, blow them a kiss. Don't touch just yet. And yes, you touch them with hand sanitizer, okay? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, but we love you. Y'all have a seat. God bless you. Listen, it's halftime. It's halftime. We got halftime. something special to talk about now. We do. You came up with this idea, Aventure, about love and football because one of your favorite movies is... Love and Basketball. And since usually the Super Bowl falls a Sunday before the Sunday that precedes Valentine's Day, right. we used to be able to do something separate, but it collides today. Yeah. And your team is in the Super Bowl. Cincinnati Bengals. Who day? Who day? Who to the daggone day? Hey. My husband was born in Cincinnati. He's so proud of these Bengals today. They're winning. They are going to win. They are going to win. Get that in your spirit. And for the 17 of y'all that gamble, put your money on the Bengals. I'm not telling you to gamble. A pastor shouldn't tell people to gamble. But I'm telling you right now, they're going to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, love and football. <laughs> Let's talk about the love piece. I want to talk about something that you and I... Um, experience because when we got married a little over 11 years ago, there was a scripture that you insisted was a part of our nuptials. And it's 1 Corinthians 13, starting at the fourth verse. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and here's what it says. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, as speaking to me, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. That means you believe the best about your partner uh, instead of the worst. Yeah. I could work on that. Uh, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Av, I want to ask you, why was that scripture so important for us as married, knowing that we have a lot of married folk in different areas of their covenant, but then we also have single people and some who are single by choice and some who are single by issues. So how do you quantify love and how has it sustained you in this marriage I'm telling you this scripture means uh the world to me I feel like it should be at the center of your marriage mm -hmm. anytime things come up we should remember that long suffering means that in spite of trials in spite of issues that you love and you are patient in the midst of because situations will happen and 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 issues will arise but do you have the, the requisite substance to see the person beyond that moment to understand that whatever they're walking through at that moment may not have anything to do with you. Sometimes when the issue arises, there are other triggers or outside uh, forces that cause you to literally go left in a way that you never would with someone else. That's very true. And the person that's closest to you usually absorbs all of that. But in knowing me, I would think that you would trust that whatever it is that I'm bringing to you is not meant to hurt you, but it's meant to grow us forward. That scripture and having love isn't rude and it's long suffering. All of those words seem like it's not attainable or like there could, can't be a consistency where it's concerned, but it absolutely can be. If you use it as the tool and at the forefront of your marriage, insisting that God is that third element, actually the first of the three oh, elements in the threefold court, um, you're, 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 covenant won't be easily broken if you refer back 
to this scripture. I love it. And I think that for everybody who's a part of our love and football Sunday, I want to encourage you that anywhere where you see the word love, substitute God. God, yeah. God is patient. God is kind. He does not envy. When he does not boast. He keeps no record of wrong. Any of them. And he bears all things, hopes all things, believes all things. God never fails. And, and so he endured all things on the cross. I just had to throw that in there. Oh, go ahead, preacher. He endured it all for us. I'm and, telling you. And listen, I, when you talked about the dynamic in the marriage uh, of, you know, love suffers long and is kind, I have to admit that there have been many times when I've been offended by something you bring to me or some conversational exchange because I expect that you know me. So I immediately uh, would respond because I am impulsive and I'm impatient at times, and it's true. And, and it's something that the Holy Spirit and I need to continue to work on, and I'll be working on it for the rest of my life. But I want to tell you that my impulse and the, the emotions that came from those difficult conversations was because I'm vulnerable to you and I'm not vulnerable to other people. I can be patient if you're distant because you're not close enough to hurt me. Wow. But you, I expect you to know me, but that's an unfair thing because I'm changing. You said impatient and impulsive, but when I think about football, you're like the husband in the marriage is the quarterback. Come on. Think about if the quarterback was impulsive and also impatient. He is responsible for every play and how that play is to, you know, be carried out. Come on. So the wife is like a left tackle. Mm. She sees your blind spots. So if you have organized things, you're getting ready to carry out the play and involve every, all of the other entities in life, right? The wife has discernment and she can spot what you can't. So you should see me in a way that I'm not hurting you. I'm bringing something to you to help us get the touchdown. <laughs> I've been studying. And also, wives are a wide receiver, okay, because we have babies. But we also have to make sure the wide receiver to be able to catch the ball and win you had to have done your position. That's great. Let me, first of all, we need a praise break right there. Somebody ought to bless God because the fact that you protect my blind side, you spot the enemy when I'm just trying to get the ball down the field. That's amazing. You're not just a wide receiver, you're the center too because you hiked me the ball. <laughs> 42, <laughs> set, hut. Uh, okay, back to Jesus. Okay. That is Jesus, actually. It, it actually <laughs> is when you're married. For the single people, stay on the <laughs> sidelines now. Watch the plays. Don't be <laughs> hiking be no balls. It's time to get in the game, but you learn everything you need so you're ready for the plays when it's your turn. Amen. Come on. Listen, we could go on and on, but this is just halftime. Let's do a part two. We have had so much amazing things happen already in this service. We've had some amazing special presentations and we got more to go. But I want to tell you how much we love you, Relentless Church. And let's keep this thing going. It's just halftime. Go on and high five three people. Tell them there's more to come. There's more to come. Hit me three times. There's Boom, more three to times. come. One, two, three. All right. We love you from not ESPN, but RLNTS. Okay? At halftime. Back to you, church. <laughs>